I don't care if I'm fishing for lake trout, walleyes, even crappies, perch. I mean, when it comes to finding fish, especially just trying to trigger aggressive fish, trying to get a response and break down water fast, I've always been a big fan of glide baits, and this is just a phenomenal lure that'll catch fish basically all year long. When we designed the Tika minnow, I mean, a lot, of, a lot went into this. You know, first off, we wanted a heavy lure that fished fast, that moved a lot of water, had the right water displacement. And what we did differently with this lure is it's just a zinc one-piece construction. And so with that zinc fin, it just seems like you just get that nice horizontal glide where it really moves off to the side. This is a new size this year. It's a 16th ounce, which, you know, if you fish for crappies, you know, you know that at times crappies can be a predator. Perch can be a predator where they want to chase a bait, they want to chase a minnow. And so even big bluegills, when you need to, especially when you need to sample water and find water, get those fish to lift in the water column, it's tough to beat a glide bait. When you get on a school of fish, you can get right back down onto them. So I'm, I love glide baits. Jumbo perch, crappies, love these smaller sizes. And then obviously, I, I don't know if there's a bait category or a lure category that I've caught more walleyes on in my life is glide baits. I mean, they're right, right up there with spoons in my eyes. And so you take a popular walleye size, which this is one of the new colors here, that white wonder bread. And again, upsize red treble hook and a little tip when you're using these, a lot of times we're, we're putting bait on the bottom hook. You don't always have to, especially for lake trout and walleyes. You can fish these clean and fish them aggressively and catch fish. But if you do tip them, a lot of times I'm just pinching off a minnow head, just kind of bend that hook around and put that minnow head on that front hook. That way when it hangs, it's balanced. So that way it doesn't cream off to one side or the other. You want this lure to be balanced. And I've got a small snap for walleye fishing. If I'm using the smaller size for panfish, I'll tie direct. A lot of times I'm holding it still and quivering more where that fish can get a better look at it. But with walleyes, I'm moving these. And so I'm using a snap with a fluorocarbon leader, a small swivel, and then it goes right to my braided line. And basically when I'm working these, People ask all the time, how do I work these glide baits? How do I work these tika minnows? When you're not marking fish, there's no wrong way in the sense that you just want to get their attention, okay? If the water column is blank, there's nothing down there, there's no fish below you, rip that tika minnow, pound it, rip it up three feet, four feet, pound it hard in a hard uh, one foot bounce or a one foot cadence, bring those fish in because the beauty of the tika minnow where it shines is that these fish can see it from a long ways. It just has a flash and it has that that swimming action that below the hole where a fish might be able to see it in clear water, they might be able to see it 20, 30, 40 feet away. Bring the fish to you. Okay, once those fish show up, sometimes when fish are really hot and wound up, they just want that moving and they're just gonna come in and crush it and surprise you. But a lot of times the fish will just show up and they'll just come up to it. And then a lot of times the cadence, the bounce, gets smaller and shorter and tighter as fish come up to smell it, to come up and, and, and get nose to nose with it. So a lot of times when the fish get closer and they get right on top of you, that cadence, that bounce, your jig stroke gets tighter and shorter and, and just more focused. And so when a fish comes right up on you, a lot of times just a bounce, it's just a quiver. Maybe raise it up, bounce it, bounce it, quiver, stop momentarily, bounce it, and just keep playing keep away at that fish and just get that fish to rise. Half of it is just getting the fish to rise. You can get the fish to rise one, two, three feet in the water column. Usually by the time it gets to you, you shake it a few times, give it a few bounce, stop, and the fish hits. And so crappies, perch, lake trout, walleyes, basically the maneuver is all the same. You just want to rip it, bring the fish in. If they don't hit it and surprise you with the rip and the, and the hard bounce and that hard flash, hard stroke, bounce, hold, quiver, bounce, hold, lift, quiver. A combination of that will usually seal the deal when fish get right on top of you. And so new for this year, we've got a few colors. And, and I tell you what, some of my favorite colors of the last few years is obviously you go one or two directions. You go, you know, the realistic or the metallic flash, the holographic type colors are really good, especially in clear water, sunny days. You know, like a holographic orange gold is a favorite of mine, for example. But in dirty, dingy water, you know, another thing that I like to do is just that that Great Lakes inspired color scheme in the sense that you, know, you have that Easter egg palette, that Wonder Bread type colors. We just have this bold contrasting color that again, these fish can see from a long ways. And so tell you what, Reef Runner colors, one of my favorite color of all time is Wonder Bread. And so white Wonder Bread, something that we've got new for this winter. We also have a pink Wonder Bread, which again, it's all about contrast. Fish being able to see it from a distance. It's just, you're playing the percentages. The more fish that can see you, the more fish that come into your cone angle, the more fish you have a chance to catch. And then obviously you can't do anything without having chartreuse in the tackle box. So here's the chartreuse Wonder Bread. 
which is just a solid color. And then <laughs> this last new color is this frog pattern, which I just love. It probably looks like a lot of different things. I tell you what, in a lot of these lakes, especially out in the Dakotas, these fish are just full of leopard frogs in the fall and winter. And so great lure, these fish can see it and find it from a long ways. But you know, you look at this larger size here, this is seven eighths of an ounce. And the reason we came up with this size is because this is also a phenomenal open water, midsummer, late summer, fall lure. And the reason we wanted that bigger size, just heavier size, so that we would get down fast, especially if we're fishing, you know, 20 feet, 30 feet, 45 feet of water. And again, with that zinc bill, you can pound this into rock and you just don't have to worry about breaking it. And so that was really the appeal of this is that it's amazing, you know, when this lure gets swinging and it comes back to center right below your rod tip, it's just so much easier to find this on your sonar. And so a lot of times, even if you're in your boat, if you're on the bow of your boat, you know, you're video fishing, you're watching this lure on your electronics and watching fish come up and, and re react to this. And so very effective lure all year long. These bigger sizes are also really popular on, on, especially on Great Lakes fisheries where you're just dealing with bigger fish, bigger forage. Places like Green Bay, Bay Dinoc, Lake Erie love this larger size. And so just a phenomenal lure category that you look at from the smallest to the largest size catches a lot of different fish and I tell you what, it's just one of my favorite lures to fish for so many different species of fish with.